Hey, boys and girls, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. Hey, mom. Dot com. Uh, so this is going to be the first in the series. We're going to have a playlist here of me doing my boat shopping in 2020. This is late 2020. And I'm interested in, so I run a Ranger Z5 2021C. It's a 2018 model. I got about 170 hours on my motor, so I'm starting to think maybe I need to be looking at a new boat. A lot of things have changed with Ranger over the last few years, and I, I really don't know if I'm going to buy a new Ranger or not. I don't even know if I'm going to buy a new boat or not. But I wanted to do some shopping, and I'm in a unique position because of what I do with my videos to get some people to let me borrow their boats. Uh, and so I thought I would do some boat shopping, and I would bring you guys along for the ride. Uh, now, this is going to be shopping for me, but I'm going to try to make it generic enough and give you enough of a view of features and what I like and what I dislike for you to kind of think through next time you're in the market for a boat what you might like or dislike. Now, I've got a number of brands in mind. They're scrolling across the bottom of the screen right now as to what I'm interested in looking at. If you have an idea of something you'd like me to look at as well, I'd be glad to do that. Now, I have had several guys ask me about a Triton. I have heard from a number of places, and I'm not starting rumors, and I'm not passing rumors on, but I've heard from a lot of places, as probably you have, that there may not be a Triton in the next few years. But Moon Pie, my buddy, drives a Triton, so I'll borrow his boat and I'll fish out of it for a day. I've spent a lot of time in it. But I'll walk you through his boat, and I'll give you my thoughts on his boat. And by the way, I like his boat. So um, what I'm going to do for you here, though, these are not going to be short videos. Matter of fact, this first one, we're going to look at the Bass Cat Puma Hybrid, which is the it's an FTD, but it's a hybrid, and I'll explain what that means in the video. Um, it's uh, It was a boat I was interested in looking at. And luckily, I had access to it through Ross Motorsports here in Lufkin, who I don't know well, but I know a bunch of their guys well enough. They were kind enough to let me run that boat for a day and kind of get a feel for it. They sent a guy along, which is going to be today's video. I told them right up front, I'm going to say what I like and I'm going to say what I don't like. I'm not going to bash anybody, but I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like. That may be different than what you like and what you don't like. Excuse me, I got a mosquito flying around my head. But... I think you'll get a sense of what I'm driving at here and just trying to establish the quality, the build, the fishability, the ride, and kind of everything else about these bass boats. Because what I realized is I don't co-boat, right? I mean, I don't co-angler. When I'm in a boat, I'm holding the steering wheel, and I think I say that again in this video. So I want to experience a bunch of different boats, and I'm not in a hurry to buy a new boat. I don't have a big championship or anything coming up where I feel like I've got to be in a new boat. So we're going to go boat shopping. Now, let me show you kind of the criteria. So I've got a scoring criteria. It's the only really way I could, kind of, and I, by the way, so I am dumb, stupid, analytical in my real world in the insurance and investing world. So I like having sort of numerical, here's, here's kind of how you're an A, a B, a C, or a D. So I've built five categories, and I'll walk you through them in just a second. Zero to nine score in any one of those categories is below average. It's less than average. Uh, 10 or 12 is going to be average. Pretty good boat. Uh, 13 to 16 is going to be good. 17 or 18 is going to be excellent. And 19 or 20, you blew my socks off about something. And by the way, no participation trophies here, right? Just because you show up and, and let me borrow your boat. Got, and I've got some guys, some of my viewers have said, hey, come run my boat, and I'll, I'm going to take you up on that. But if I don't like something about your boat, I'm going to tell you that. Um, so then when you translate that to the overall scoring, I think kind of 0 to 45 is less than average in a boat I probably wouldn't run. Uh, 45 to 60 is average, and truthfully, you'd have to give me a spectacular deal on a boat. It'd have to be a value boat for me to buy a boat that scores between 46 and 60. 61 to 80 is good, and I'm going to tell you right now, I haven't scored my Ranger, but I think it's going to be in the low to mid good range there in that 61 to 80, kind of as I, as I thought through it. Uh, 81 to 90 is going to be off the charts excellent. You score 81 or better, you, you've got a great boat for what I'm looking for. And I say here 91 or higher, not likely. I just don't think any one boat manufacturer does enough things right I mean, historically speaking, I'll pick on these two, right? 
Bass Cat and Champion. Champion had a great ride, but it was slow. Bass Cat had a super fast boat, but I didn't like the ride in it. Now, I haven't been in one in a long time, but historically, that would have been my give and take to say, well, that there's no way that boat's going to score over 91. A couple of guys are saying there's some boats that I'm going to score super high. We shall see. So the five categories, the five categories are going to be number one, fishability. Again, score one to 20, layout, box accessibility. Is it stable when you're fishing? Uh, is the gunnel height super high so it's hard to flip out of it? Uh, is uh, uh, the deck width is kind of square footage in the boat. I'm not a small guy. I'm 6'2", 6'3", 190 pounds, uh, and I team fish a lot. So I want a lot of room, and we usually team fish on the front deck together. Are the cockpits roomy? And interesting, you're going to hear something about this, this first boat, about the cockpit roominess that was, it's huge. Uh, second will be fit and finish. Uh, what's the quality of the carpet? What's the quality of the trim? And by the way, that's some of the things my Rangers are going to score poorly in uh, that my older Rangers wouldn't have. Uh, box stability, do they lift and close cleanly? Are they tight? Do they flex too much when you step on them? I'm not that big of a guy weight-wise at 190 pounds. I got a buddy that's way up in his twos, and I see box lids flex under him. I don't really want that. Are the seats comfortable? The driver's seats, are they adjustable? Are the deck, is the front deck padded? Uh, extra points if the back deck's padded. Uh, how good are the live wells? How big are the live wells? What comes in the live well? Then performance will be category three. Whole shot, top speed, how dry is the ride, and what's the rough water ride like? Uh, and then the last two, amenities. So what do you do in new or different, right? Uh, I keep hearing that Vexus is doing a lot of things new or different. I hadn't been in one yet, so I don't know. Uh, do you have a good place to store the net? I mean, Ranger's got a spot you can stick it, but it's still on the floor. It's still on the way. Do you have USB connections? I still haven't seen a boat that has a USB connection in a box so I can charge my phone while it's stored. Why hasn't anybody done that? Maybe somebody has. Do you have a good place to store my wallet, my phones? Do you have in good interior lighting? What's your rod storage setup look like? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, and then things I don't know about yet, right? I mean, again, all I have really fished out of is a Ranger and Kevin Skeeter in the last few years and, and Moon Pie Skeeter, uh, Triton. So what are other manufacturers doing that I don't even know about to score points in that amenities category? Okay, so and then the fifth category will be everything else, right? Trailer, feedback from my buddies that have run those boats. I'm talking to some fiberglass shop. Actually, my question to the fiberglass shops locally is, what are the three best built boats? And what boat are you seeing the most problems out of right now? And I'll, I'll add that in as we go. Uh, is it a good jack? Uh, does the boat have, does the trailer have shocks? Which is, I don't think on many trailers. Uh, backup lights, are they good backup lights? Do they have a parking brake, right? My Ranger's got a parking brake on the trailer. I love that. I can pull in a parking lot, lock it up, and have put chocks on the trailer. I don't know why somebody didn't think of that years ago and why they don't all have that. Is it a good looking trailer, right? Um, uh, and then trailer steps. I, I love that. My boat doesn't have that. I, that's extra points for me. Now, I got to say right now, some of the boats I'm going to check will have some of this stuff or not have some of this stuff that it's options. I'm going to judge the boat, boat I look at. So don't get all bound up that I didn't score well because it didn't have trailer steps because the boat I didn't test have trailer steps. I'll, I'll look at that personally when I do that, but I'm just looking at certain, you know, I'm looking at boats and trying to make a decision on everything, including what options are available on them as well. Now, I'm also going to add, so that would be 0 to 100. I don't see anybody getting above a 90. I just don't. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm probably going to way overpay for a boat. Uh, but then also for tournament guys, I'm going to throw an additional 20 points on there. Now, all my viewers obviously are not tournament guys. But an additional 20 points on there for contingency prize money. So for years and years, I'll use Ranger Cup again. Ranger had a great contingency prize package. They don't anymore. There's some better ones out there now. So zero to 20 for that for tournament anglers. And I'm not I'm look. I looked at Bass Cats before this video. Oh my gosh, there's 40 team circuits they list on there. I'm not going through it piece by piece. I'm just taking the 36,000 foot view of. Does it look like a good contingency package to me? Uh, so there you go. So that, that's, my, uh, that's my initial criteria on these boats. 
Now, the videos I'm about to do, so there's going to be two parts to this, and they're both going to be pretty long because, again, I, I go into detail on these things. But uh, what I'm going to tell you is this is my personal preference. Don't get bound up if you disagree with me about something. It's just my personal preference on these boats, but I think this will be a broad enough view that you'll get some value out of it, and I'm going to do a whole bunch of boats. On this video, I got good video throughout, except this very first little section I got out of the truck, and it was super humid and a little bit foggy, and it was cold in the truck and hot outside, so I got a little bit of lens fog for about three or four minutes here. Then it's going to clear up, and it's all good video thereafter. So bear with me through these first few minutes, and I think you're going to enjoy this series. I am certainly already enjoyed doing it. I did my first boat yesterday, I do my second boat tomorrow, and I do my third boat the following day. So I'm going to get at least one of these up a week and kind of blast through this. Probably going to take me two months to do this, uh, but we're going to blast through these, and together we're going to figure out if, if there is a better boat than what I'm running right now, and if so, if I can afford the doggone thing and get in one. So here we go, guys. Bass Boat Search Fall of 2020, and we'll be looking mostly at 2021 models. Here we go. Well. So I wanted to test drive a bunch of boats, and fortunately I'm in a position to be able to do that, and I'm going to do it along with you guys, so we're all going boat shopping together. And I was really interested, so again, I have not been in a whole lot of boats, but I was really interested in something I heard about less than three weeks ago. Now, interestingly, I think this has been uh, built or been in the planning stages for some years now, but it hadn't been out. And what it is is, hey, look, magically a cup of coffee disappeared. So you're going to see in a second I'm not by myself this morning. Uh, so what happened was uh, Bass Cat knew that, so we're, we're going to be in a Bass Cat this morning. Now, by the way, for you traditional go fast Bass Cat guys, I'm going to drive another Bass Cat. But this is what made me curious. I had heard that Bass Cat created a boat basically with some of the hull features from an old Champion 203. And they call it a Puma, uh, uh, Puma Hybrid. And I got one here this morning. So I've got Hank here with me. Check this boat out. Morning. So this thing's pretty. We've been looking at it. It's got a traditional Bass Cat cap on it. And then, and by the way, we've got it. So I. One of the things I didn't want to do, which everybody does, I love Kevin Van Dam made a statement one time about his nitros, about the best time to run them was right when he got them because there was nothing in them. Yep. So Hank and I have loaded a bunch of our crap in this boat this morning. And we're going to take it out. Now, we got a pretty calm day. I'm hoping the wind comes up a little bit throughout the day. But we're going to take this boat out, and we're going to do a little bit of boat riding. Now, there's a couple of things... Uh, and, and I've already told Hank, and, and so by the way, thank you for the, to the guys at Ross Motorsports for letting me borrow this boat today, uh, which comes attached with Hank, by the way. A uh, couple of things that, that, so I won a champion years ago, and it was a fine riding boat. Two things, one thing bothered me about that boat, and, and part of it was I came out of a Skeeter. I was driving a big Skeeter when I won that boat. And I felt like the boat was a little bit tippy, and obviously they're a little more narrow on the front end. So we're gonna we're gonna examine that today, and I'm gonna show y'all how we do it once we get in the boat. But we're gonna launch it, we're gonna take it out, we're gonna fish out of it. Hopefully, between Hank and I, we can figure out how to catch some dead gun fish, so we can see uh, see how it looks. But we're gonna look at the inside, we're gonna look at the live wells, we're gonna look at everything, and uh, let's go fishing. Let's do it, man. All right. Okay, so one of the things that's really easy to measure or, or to get stats on, right, Hank, is the dimensions of a boat. Exactly. But what I'm concerned about, which we were just talking about off camera, was fishable space. So what I want to do is measure fishable space at the pole from, from so measure my carpet width right here. Yeah, so basically what we're going to do is let the loud truck pass by. Oh, um, a bass cap, by the way. It is a bass cap. Uh, we're going to pretty much measure from the front seat post, but really where your rod box is in right here. That's perfect. So what you're looking at right here is right at about 50, right at 57 inches. Okay, let's do the same on the back deck. Now guys, this is the first boat we've taken out. We're going to do this in every boat. So I, I don't know the answer to this yet, 
So we'll be we'll go right from the back seat post, yep. which is really it's, it's truly the middle of the deck, and you're looking at just over six foot, right at six foot two inches, seventy four inches. Okay, so there you go. So the beam, and by the way, I'll put the stats in the bottom down here, but there's the beam stats, but there's the fishable stats. So that's something I was curious about, and uh, we'll, we'll stop it in the water and we'll go from here. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to check was, and I'm gonna do it on every boat, is the tippiness of the boat. And specifically, I wanted to see how much the boat leans when somebody is on the side of the front deck or the side of the back deck. Now, since I'm gonna do a lot of these by myself, I think the only way to fairly do this test is for me to stand right here. And what you'll see on that back deck is I have a, and by the way, so I'm right sideways from the pole. I've got a digital level with a camera back there. So it's gonna tell us what our, our tilt is. And I can't quite read it, 1.1 degree. Now we're gonna do the same thing. I think my camera's recording back here. We're gonna do the same thing from back here. So again, I'm standing as a guy might fish, right all the way on the side of the boat. And it actually is not nearly as tippy as I remember my champion being. So I wish I could read that. You guys can read it. But there you go. That'll tell us. I'm going to do that with every boat, the stability. And actually, let's, if we rock it a little bit, we can get a little bit more like you're getting off a stump. And I will tell you, one of the things I did like about my champion a lot about that ability to rock that boat was uh when i was doing it i was fishing richland chambers which was a stump hole back then and it was a great boat to get it off of stumps oops sorry that was a super close up so let's go get hank and let's do uh let's check the whole shot now by the way during that test live wells were full uh because as soon as i'm on the water i got a limit right no but yeah i filled the live wells up because i felt like that was the way to do that test we are uh Hold on and I'll tell you what our fuel level is. We're a little bit at right at half a tank of fuel. Can you make that? Don't bust your butt. All right. I'll be real curious to check that footage and see what our tip, our tippy was right there. Okay, so a uh, couple things I've noticed since I got in the boat. I like, so I've never had a boat with this funky steering wheel, the bass catch steering wheel. What I like about it, I've noticed is I can see my graph really good. Now it looks like, can you get a 12 in that space? You can get a 10. Okay, that's ten, what I ten, was saying. A 10 flush mounted and then bass cat. 12 over here. You, yes, but bass cat also offers where you can take out some of your gauges and do balls out mounts and you can have dual mounted uh, graphs from Let's the factory. Let's get some footage of that at some point, how some guys are setting their bass yeah, cats up. Yeah, definitely. So we're 160, 190. We're about 350. We're trimmed all the way down. Oh, it just. No, it, it's, it's rolling. It is, all right. Uh, live wells are full. Am I trimmed all the way down? Let's check the whole shot on this boat. What prop are we running? Uh, it's a 24. Okay, so we got a big prop on there. Probably a little light on the front end of what we normally carry. We're also live wells full. Li oh, absolutely. All right, so that was bad conditions, right? That was a three quarter, that, that was a chop right off of our starboard stern. So with a little trail wind, 350 pounds worth of dudes in it, an ice chest, live wells completely full. I touched 69.9 before he said, this is where we're gonna fish. So 
it's definitely faster, which surprises me than my Ranger. Uh, and again, it's a two, it's a four-stroke Mercury. Uh, 2020, 2020 or 2021 on this. This, is 20, this. this model specifically is the 2021. Oh, that, so we're in a 2021 boat. Good to know. Yes, sir. They, they, All right, so we uh, we fished for a little while. We've not uh, we've not caught anything, but I've had a chance to experience a little bit about the boat. And Hank said some stuff to me out there in the wind that I kind of want to repeat. So a couple things I've noticed about the boat. Uh, it's interesting. So and it, it, Hank, is this typical for the Bass Cat that they put all the stuff really far forward? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and depending on the model you get, the 2021 Cougars are going to have, yeah, sorry about that. The 2021 Cougars are going to have the same feature as your, your, your era where you have the ability to move your foot pedal farther back. There's basically a block right here where you can remove it and slide your pedal back. Oh, no kidding. So awesome, awesome feature. You're also going to see a different deck layout in the era. Um, as well as a different deck layout in the Cougar, but you will have two front uh, seat post holes. Okay. So if you want to scoot everything back, you can get a little bit farther back. Um, definitely an option. Um, and then there's there's different little corks between um, your your Puma and your Cougar deck layout. Um, so you said earlier you can buy the hybrid, which is the the old Champion style hull, in two different top caps. Yes. Okay, so so the that. so the 203 hole overall is is shaped just like your original puma and cougar hull with the 203 modifications by the way just because it's a bass boat a 203 is 20 feet four inches figure that out yes but it is it's a little yeah. bit longer than the, what the, the hull is. yeah the overall length and, and the reason it's called the 203 is it has that some of the 203 features yep. embedded into the hull so you are able to just like with the puma or a cougar you get the same hole, so you can get this 203 hole option when you order a boat, but you can choose whether you want a Puma or a Cougar top cap. All right, so a traditional Puma or Cougar, how long are those boats? Both 20 foot 4 okay, inches. Makes sense. Yep, so you're looking at the same overall length um, when it comes to the trailer, same overall width. Your, your overall, the boat, the fishability when you're sitting in calm water, anything like that is going to feel the exact same as your Puma or your Cougar. But when you get into the differences is when you get out into the big water. So what's the deck layout difference in a Cougar versus this boat? So Cougar versus a Puma, overall, your front box storage is going to be a little bit bigger when it comes to your Cougar. Um, so is it still three box lids? Still three box lids, but your overall, your second cooler as well as your day box is going to be smaller. Pop it's going to open for us. Yeah. So here is a second cooler right here big front cooler um which a lot of people like you also have a cooler right right where you're standing actually um right underneath can you will a, will a prop fit in that or is it <laughs> i couldn't tell you off the okay. top of my head without looking at it yep. but um definitely have enough storage in the back for stuff like that um i would like to see i would like to try that out is there That'd storage under cool. the seats or storage not? under both oh there seats. is okay yes there is that's probably yes let's go for that yeah okay might be able to get a, uh, a prop in there. Get you a prop will fit in there. Yeah, definitely. Okay. But after looking at everything, you're, and then you also have your day box right here. Okay. So personally, this is this is a, a, a more original style design boat. Mike Iaconelli runs this boat, um, and what what you know if you haven't seen our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. We did a demo ride on this about a week ago. We came out to Rayburn, um, and our general manager, Ryan, pointed out that this is an awesome seat to where you can have your full day box open, be able to rig, do whatever you need. Even if you're dual console. Even if you're dual console, exactly. So that that's one of the cool features about it. And then, but in the Cougar, like you were saying, to get back to your original question, this, this step and this seat, this cooler, is just going to be cut back probably half to two-thirds of the way. Um, so it elongates your front deck, gives you a little bit more square footage, um, but those are the two oh, things. Oh, I'm sorry. So let's say that again. So the deck actually comes back further in yes. the Cougar. Okay. Yes. So the yes. box is smaller because the front yes. deck's bigger. And your, and your tackle storage overall in the Cougar deck layout is larger. Okay. Yes. So we need to carry more junk around. Good idea. Ex no, exactly. That just gives us another excuse to make the old women at home happy. Right. <laughs> Easy there.
Okay, uh, I talked about this out in the wind earlier. Uh, you'll notice the uh, it does not have the pull out cords. Again, I, I don't consider that a positive or a negative because I've had problems with mine and my Ranger. Stuff will hang up in them and I actually had to replace one. So that's a little simpler layout, kind of a little more old school, but probably as with everything, less crap to break, right? Yes. Uh, you could, I guess you could double stack your graphs on the right up there if yes. you wanted to. Yeah, and, and there's plenty of room for you to put a Bass Boat Technologies or your preferable brand of dual mount um, for a graph up there. Um, and there's, there's a lot of different options for that. Um, you can also get it from the factory with the dual mount um, there up front and at the console. Um, and there's, it's just a bunch of different little features that you can do that you can add where you can get it from the factory or you can do it aftermarket.